Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my presentation. My name is Fernanda Caron and I'm an undergraduate student at the Universidade Federal do Paraná in Brazil. I'm going to talk about a study called Geographical Range Overlap Networks and the Microecology of Species Co-Occurrence, which was carried out in collaboration with my advisor, Dr. Marcio P. It is well known that direct interactions among species are only possible if there is some overlap in their geographical distributions, but little work has been done on the evolution of range overlap. So our main objectives for this study were first to describe a simple model of range overlap based on the log normal distribution of species range sizes along a one-dimensional uh, domain with and without absorbing boundary conditions. Second, explore range overlaps represented as range overlap networks. And third, compare the predictions from the model with an empirical data set of bird altitude node distributions. Basically, the model focuses on the mean and variance of range overlap distributions. First, we simulated ranges of S species according to a log normal distribution along a single continuous dimension in which D is the size of the entire domain. Then the midpoint of each range was uniformly distributed along the available space and then truncated if exceeded D so that all ranges fit within the available domain. And what this truncation reflects is the possibility that a species could potentially be distributed beyond the limits of D, but were prevented from doing so due to um, geometric constraints in the available geographical space. Second, we define rho as the ratio between the average species range size prior to truncation with respect to the size of the entire domain D. The size of the range overlap between a pair of species was defined as the intersection along D in which both species are co-distributed. In this figure, we see how variation in rho would affect both pattern of range overlap and the resulting overlap network. Um, and we then use the resulting overlap patterns to generate overlap networks. We first assess with our model the relationship between mean and variance in range size distribution and the average number of overlapping species. And the results show that as expected, the mean number of overlapping species increases with their mean range size. However, the shape of this relationship was directly affected by the variance in the underlying range size distribution. The results of simulations with truncation on the left and without truncation on the right were very similar. Next, we assessed the relationship between rho and mean range overlap, which showed a positive relationship throughout most of the parameter space, and the relationship between the variance in range size and variance in range overlap, which was linear, with modest decreases in slope with increasing range size. The results of truncated and non-truncated were very similar. Finally, we also examined topological properties of the resulting range overlap network, and the results show for non-truncated simulations um, the distribution of node values for the degree distribution and closeness changed from more homogeneous to asymmetric as range size increased, whereas the opposite was found for between us. On the other hand, high variance levels led to the formation of plateaus with many species with similar scores, and results from truncated simulations were very similar from non-truncated simulations. Lastly, with the comparison between the predictions of our model and the empirical data on avian altitudinal distributions in five different regions showed that many more species are constrained in their distribution by the lowest than by the highest altitudinal limit. The mean of the range overlaps were slightly smaller than the underlying range sizes, but the overall shape of the range overlap distribution was well predicted by our model. Also, empirical data sets had more um, range overlapping species, higher degree and closeness scores, and lower between is than expected. And the results from non-truncated simulations were again very similar to non-truncated simulations. So in conclusion, we recognize that our model is a first approximation and that we have not incorporated several important mechanisms. And also there are some obvious limitations in our model. Yet we believe that the approach presented here can provide an important step in the direction. Second, the deviations from the expectation found in the empiric, in the empiric data could be explained by um, phylogenetic niche conservatism or given that there are lowland species that extend their ranges upward. This asymmetric source of species to mountain communities might lead to this asymmetry. Uh, thank you for attending to this talk and I'll be happy to take any questions.